This is Lydia Gwynn with Chew and the Loo. Thanks for downloading this week's podcast. Don't forget to go to our website at chewintheloo.org for recipes, culinary ideas around St. Louis, and local food stories. Now on to our show. Joe, how is your January going? My January is not so dry and <laughs> cold. And, yeah. uh, um, you know, we're sitting here on Zoom to record this podcast because of COVID still. So, um, you know, things are okay. They're okay. We'll say that. But we're talking about food today. We're talking with uh, Karen Dugan, STL Veg Girl from the Center for Plant Based Living, which is exciting. Yeah. Um, so things are good. Things are looking up. Things yes. are growing. Plants yeah. are growing. How about that? I love it. I love it. Well, I know that when this episode airs, it's usually about the time of the month when people have either dropped off their New Year's resolution or they're in the teetering moment. So we kind of thought like, well, let's just have a conversation because so much of what we try to do in the new year, we try to cram into those 31 days and think that our whole life can be changed or our health can improve in 31 days. And I think um, it, and talking with Karen, uh, you know, there's ways for us to do it that are sustainable. So I thought Amen. I would just maybe start today with a little bit of a fun game with you, Joe. Are you ready for this? Can I put you on the spot? Mm. You, are, games, you are, you are. Sure. I, well, <laughs> Mr. Curmudgeon over for there. It. Go All for right. It. All right. Well, Let's listen, go. this is right up your alley because you are the master of words do you do a lot of crossword puzzles I, every time i meet you you have like a new very long syllabic um word in your repertoire I, I, I'm, I enjoy a good vocabulary word i don't know that i do crossword puzzles necessarily but you know, you're like a walking enjoy- thesaurus right oh, i appreciate that thank you <laughs> Are we, okay, are we, so, are you gonna give me like a, I love seek and finds. If you give me a seek and find and say find ten food words that are going to determine my food journey for 2022, I'd be thrilled. Is that what this is? Yes. No, uh, no, no. Well, so this <laughs> game, it's it is just a simple like word association. So I'm going to give you a word, okay. and you just kind of give back to me um, your first thing that comes to mind, right? Okay. okay. Cool. Yeah. All right. Are you ready? So yeah. first word is resolution. New Year's. Okay. Um, diet. No fun. <laughs> okay. How about um, vegan? Hippies. Okay. What about plant-based? Hippies. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Um, and meat alternative. Vegans. <laughs> <laughs> Impossible oh. burgers. Oh, there you go. Okay. And then lastly, lifestyle. Change. Okay. All right. Perfect. Did any, I meet your any... expectations? I feel I feel like I failed that exercise. I feel like I just stereotyped what we're gonna talk about today, which is the exact opposite of what I should be doing as no. the co-host of this podcast. But I'm sure by the end of this podcast, I'll have a much better understanding and appreciation for plant-based living. Well, I think that your uh, word association is pretty fair and true to what most people would associate with those words, right? Um, And part of today is to kind of have those conversations about, you know, when we talk about resolutions, I hate that word. I hate, I don't do New Year's resolutions. I do New Year's goals because a resolution really has a resolve or that something's bad, Right. And sometimes it's just a matter of taking like a small 45 degree pivot instead of a 180 to maybe look at a different way of looking at things. So and resolutions are so easy. Like if you, if you don't do it one day, then you've broken your resolution and who wants to continue with a broken resolution? Like, that's why I like your idea of a goal or, you know, a goal shouldn't be a hundred percent compliance. A goal should be by this time, I want to do something. I want to have something done. Not right. that you want to stick to something 100%. And if you fall off that wagon just one time, that it's just thrown out the window. You know, I think that's a lot of what plant-based living is, 
It's not that somebody's going to walk in your house one day and throw away every single non-plant-based thing that ever existed in your life. But there are decisions and choices that you can make to be more plant-based at times to improve your health, improve your lifestyle for the better without sacrificing flavor, without sacrificing uh, uh, time with friends at restaurants, without sacrificing your social life and going out with people. Um, I think that's why I'm excited to talk to Karen. Yeah. Well, and, you know, I love your, um, what'd you say? Diet's no fun. (laughs) That was yours. (laughs) Yeah. Nobody, I, I, nobody thinks diets are fun. I don't know why. No. Well, and, but I mean, I agree with you. And, you know, the funny thing is, is if you start to look at some of the rhetoric that's now coming out about diets is that they're really kind of saying that diet culture is not great. It's not a great mental culture. And that's a lot of what it is to create a lifestyle that is sustainable for healthy, you know, a healthy lifestyle, a healthy living, healthy food choices. It doesn't come from associating, you know, with counting your calories or looking at good or bad food groups. Um, But it's more about eating on your physical cues. It's more about having an awareness of what your options are. So I am excited because for me, I've slowly been making the journey of kind of selecting some things that are plant-based. I know you are, you've, you've been on that journey with kind of like finding milk alternatives, right? I have, yeah, being recently discovering lactose intolerance. Um, I did a Whole Foods last year at this time, or not Whole Foods, a Whole 30 for 30 days, just to kind of cut some things out and decide what was making me not happy all the time and discovered that it was mostly milk products. Um, And I've cut that out and tried to, to cut back on lactose, not eliminating it a hundred percent because being a large Italian man, I just have to have cheese. Sometimes there just has to, it has to be there. I just can't live without it, but I, I find ways to get it in where it's appropriate with the right foods, where it doesn't upset me with, um, you know, what cheeses are low in lactose and which ones are not. So I, you know, avoid soft cheeses like ricotta and soft mozzarella, which pains me, but, um, Parmesan cheese is very low in lactose. So I can Parmesan it up all I want. Thank God. Um, but those are all things that, you know, those are all decisions and things that you have to know about your body. And, and that's a part of, of, of what that journey is about. Yes. Well, and what I will say is that I was very surprised looking at the amount of options that are out there in the market, not just in the grocery stores now, but like there's a lot of really amazing St. Louis based businesses. Um, you know, I, I don't know if you're familiar with Beats and Bones. Um, they they started in the farmer's market. I had it for the first were... time last week. I didn't go <sighs> to the new location. I actually bought some of the juice at the Annex and Webster Groves. Um, it was not cheap juice. I'll give you that. No. However, yeah. it was fantastic. I had like, I forgot what it was called. It was just a green juice of some kind. I picked it up and, uh, and, it was great. It, cold pressed juice, really, really good. Um, we knew we got a couple followers. A shout out to Patty Jaling, who's one of our big followers on Chewing the Loose. She loves Beats and Bones. Um, uh, she raves about it all the time. Um, you know, so I know there are a number of people that are excited about their brick and mortar. Um, they're on my short list of places to go and try out now that they're open. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, and they're offering food in there too. So it's not like you're like, oh, how can you support a whole brick and mortar with just uh, pressed juice? There's a whole menu in there as well. Um, and it's delicious food and the same thing with rebel kitchen. Like I was really surprised Mm -hmm. going in there. Um, you know, there are options for anyone, you know, it's like, how many people can we get around the table and how many people can order off the same menu? And I think that you can accomplish that. Um, and I I I love love that kitchen. Their cilantro lime salad dressing is so good. I actually will buy it. They sell it in schnooks in little, in little, like $5 for a bottle of it. And I actually cook with it. Um, I use it on salads, quinoa, chicken, or, and black beans and greens, really, really good all together. You could cut out the chicken and make that whole, all plant-based. Um, but I also cook with it. Um, it's really, really good, uh, to like roast chicken and potatoes and green beans in it. Oh, just really fantastic stuff. Great flavor. Yeah. Well, I'm excited to learn more from Karen because I think she's got more insight um, to some amazing places to eat here in St. Louis that offer not just vegan, but offer different alternatives. Uh, But on top of it too, like, did you know that we actually have a meat alternative plant here in St. Louis? Like we are an epicenter for part of the meat alternative movement. Really? 
Where is it? Yeah. <laughs> um, it is, hold on, I just had it up. They just did this huge contract. We just got it. Hold on, I should have had that available before speaking about it. <laughs> well, I, I'm sure if it's anything like meat processing plants, I wonder if it smells. Because if you go anywhere near a meat processing plant, I've been near some anywhere near like a 10 mile radius. They're disgusting. Um, so I would bet because it's plant based, it probably doesn't smell bad. Um, yeah. You know, um, so, so that's actually a good thing. Yeah. So in December, they actually is when they announced it, it is a 10 thousand square foot meat alternative or alternative protein factory um that is right off um idaho avenue in south st louis neighborhood so they're gonna they will their goal is at full capacity the plants will produce about 15 million pounds of pro, of product every year so here we oh, are man. at the center of protein alternative uh goods in st louis Pretty they gotta they gotta have a better name than protein alternative i'm gonna, I'm gonna eat my protein <laughs> alternative <laughs> but oh yeah. goodness awesome. yeah yeah well let's jump into it and and talk with karen and kind of get going on on all the exciting things that are going on here in st louis for food lifestyles back with our very special guest today who um is a wonderful resource not only for us today on this podcast but i think just as a whole the city of st louis is very blessed to have someone as passionate about what she does and we are welcoming karen dugan you may know her as stl veg girl um she's also the founder of the one and only of its kind center of plant-based living so karen welcome to our podcast welcome, oh, karen. thank you thank you thanks you guys this is this is such an honor really to be a part of this so thank you very much i really really appreciate your time well I'm super thrilled to have this conversation because we, I, it, this is our first time really kind of meeting and interacting, but you are not a stranger to Nine PBS. You know, there have been a couple of occasions where we have crossed paths in the digital space. Um, you have done some pieces for Living St. Louis with our producer, Anne Marie Berger. Um, you know, there, there have been times where you popped up and ever since I've seen you on Living St. Louis, I see your name pop up all the time in media across St. Louis. I see your name pop up all the time on menus at restaurants where I'm like, oh, there's STL Veg Girl popping up again with some helpful <laughs> tips for us here and there. So I'm I am amazed and astonished at at the at the legwork that you have put in in this town to share your message, talk to people, make strides in in, in your in your chosen path that you have made in the food community, uh, and that is amazing. And I'm really excited to dive into that further. Wow, we can just wrap it up right now. <laughs> I mean, I like I, I was holding my I just realized I was holding my breath as you were saying that that's I, I wow, Joe, thank you so much. I, you know, I it, it, it hasn't been easy. Um, but I will tell you that and I don't know if everyone knows this or not, but um, I do have a Bachelor of Science in broadcast journalism. And oh. I went, to, uh -huh, and I went to the broadcast center after I graduated from WashU. So um, I, my very first love, um, longtime love, is broadcast journalism. And um, so, to be able to kind of marry my two loves in life, which I didn't realize was plant-based nutrition until later, is, is really kind of cool. So. Um, I sometimes would get jokes, especially with Heidi Glaus early in like my earlier days on TV. She'd be like, oh, I can just clock out for the day because Karen, Karen she knows exactly what to do. Yep. Yep. Oh, I get that I feeling it. right away. I get that feeling right away. You just, you know where to go. You know where to take a story. So I'm going to pitch that right now and ask, give, give us your story. Like you said, you, you started in broadcast journalism. That's what you went to school for in your degree. But you said later in life, you know, plant-based uh, eating was where you went how why wh wh where did that point happen give us that story you know i gotta tell you i, I come by this way of eating um which is somewhat common um i lost it was a, a health scare so i lost my dad to cancer in 2008 and exactly 10 weeks after he passed away i was diagnosed 
Um, so that was really the one two punch that I needed to wake up and uh, pay attention to what was going on in my body. So um, I, I, in my, so my husband and I at the time also were doing a gut rehab on a house that we were living in in the city. Um, and, um, so, and I had a full-time corporate job. He had his full-time job. We were rehabbing at night. Um, this is when I did my first, um, living in St. Louis with Anne Marie and, uh, life was crazy. So, um, I, uh, I can remember when, you know, my dad passes away and then I got this, this, uh, diagnosis. And so you go through all the stages of grief, you know, you lose your dad at, you know, 30 something and, um, trying to be a good wife to my husband, a good daughter to my, to my mom, a good sister to my brother, a good, like all these things and just try to keep life kind of moving forward. And, um, and living in literally disarray in my house. And, um, but I thought, gosh, I'm scared to death. You know, like I'm had going through all this grief. I don't know what to do. I need to change something in my life. Um, what do I do? So I looked at like all these things that like quote unquote, air quotes, healthy people were doing, like they were doing yoga and acupuncture and kind of like this, like out there stuff. Now this is 2008, remember, and we are in the middle of the country. So with all that being said, and so I did all these kind of like alternative therapies and tried to like figure it out because I was scared, right? Like I, I didn't know what else to do. And so then I thought, well, you know, I don't know, maybe, maybe there is something to this food thing. Like everybody always says, eat your greens, you know, finish every, all the vegetables on your plate. And I didn't grow up really with this love of food or, you know, my mom, you know, Campbell's soup, Velveeta cheese sandwiches, um, Sundays watching football and having fried spam, not even kidding, um, on white bread. Like these are just like, it, food was no big deal in my family. You know, we just ate just again, normally or whatever. And um, so I, I didn't, initially I didn't think about nutrition as a health, you know, kind of a build a building block to health or not to health. And um, so I started diving into medical journals. Um, I, at the time was working at um, a medical practice and I made friends with some doctors and I asked them to help me how to read medical journals. And uh, then I also went to Dr. Google as well. And between those two, um, I realized, wow, there's some science behind this vegan diet. Nobody said plant-based in 2008. Um, there's some science behind this, this vegan diet, it does shrink some tumors, it does boost immune systems, it is good for you, you know, you know, news at 11, kale is good for you. Um, so <laughs> I thought, well, all right, I'll, I'll give this whole vegan thing a try. And I really did go kicking and screaming, you guys, like I, I did not want to get rid of my Tyson chicken breasts that were on sale every other Thursday at Deerberg's. I did not want to get rid of my cheese slices. Are you kidding me? You're, you're telling me I, ha I have to go out and not get a steak, you know, like whatever. So I thought I, just in order to check a box, just to say I did the vegan thing, um, I did it. So in one fell swoop, I took all of the animal products out of our kitchen, threw them away, made my husband super happy and, um, just started figuring it out, trying to figure it out. I went to the grocery store and I put orange things and yellow things and purple things and green things in my cart. You know, everybody said, or these doctors were saying, eat the rainbow. And I came home and I thought, well, shoot, what am I going to do now? Because nothing has any labels on it. Nothing says microwave for a minute and a half, turn halfway, do an, you know, like I didn't know what to do again, because I was not a cook. I don't come from cooks or chefs in my family. It was not a thing. And um, so life was this, wake up in the morning, go to the gym, come home, get dressed, shower, get dressed, go to corporate America, come home, put on gross clothes and start you know, rehabbing your house. Now, when we would eat at night at 1030 at night with, as the news was wrapping up and uh, what whoever was Carson, I guess, no Letterman was on them, who knows. And I would always make Tim and you know, to make our dinner. And I didn't know what I was doing because again, I had no time either. Right. So I would just assemble food, just like throw it on a plate and, you know, say a Hail Mary. And so one night Tim was sitting on this gross couch and we were in our gross clothes and we had 
we had plaster dust in places we didn't even have we didn't even know we had cracks and so I would I gave him this plate of food and stress levels were so high because again this house morning loss of my dad I actually you know I was still healing from surgery because I had a tumor removed out of the side of my arm like I was I could not get away from my life and so and Tim could feel it and we were just trying to trying to move ahead in life and I, I handed Tim this food or whatever it was and he looks up at me with, me with these puppy dog eyes and he said Karen and I said what Tim what <laughs> and he said I know what you're doing it makes sense it's logical but oh my god with this food you're gonna kill us both and we just started <laughs> laugh it was like kind of like that ugly laugh like release cry you know like we were just trying to figure it out so needless to say when i started doing all of this i sucked i was so 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 bad in the kitchen and the very next day unbeknownst to me tim goes to the office and starts and looks up vegan cooking classes and you guys i didn't even think about looking for a cooking class because remember i said i went into this thing kicking and screaming i don't want to learn anything i don't have any bandwidth in my brain anymore to put anything else in no thank you we're just checking a box here we are 2022 and i'm still doing it so to put that all in a nutshell it sounds like in the midst of a gut rehab of your house you decided <laughs> to do a gut rehab of your body is, is you know, what no you one saying <laughs> but it, boop, boop, yeah no one said that but but it, but Joe, you're absolutely right. Yes. Um, as, as a cancer survivor myself, congratulations on being a cancer survivor your, uh, yourself as well. Um, you. Congrats That's on right. that. How, how did your husband, minus the, the great story at the end, has he stuck with it for all this time with you? Is he still the champion for you that it sounded like he was when he went and found all those vegan cooking classes for you that first day? He is my biggest cheerleader and continues to be so. Um, and Thank if you, you ask him, yeah, it's cool. If you ask him, he will probably tell you he is 90, 90, 95% plant-based. I have never, ever asked any of my friends, any of my family to do this with me because I'm, I was always just trying to figure it out. I didn't even know if I was going to do it, you know? And um, so a lot of my friends, I, I think that I, I, I think I can safely say that I've been an influence on uh, a few family members who've turned around a little bit and, and some friends too. So um, it's easier now because it's, you know, on trend. Um, but, um, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but it's, um, I, I do think that it's, it's, it's helped some other people too, without pushing them because, you know, just it's human nature. You tell somebody, Hey, don't look over that way. We're all going to look over that way. You know, I mean, you can't tell somebody what they need to put in their body. They're just going to go running. I love it. I love it. Well, and I love your journey because like, here we are now, like you said, it's on trend. And every year I always have to laugh when I'm like reading the, the upcoming trends. And so it's like veganism as a trend. And I'm like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> veganism has been around since the beginning of time, my friends. Like it's not a yeah. trend, but it is that mindset of what it is. And kind of like the, the whole theme today is that food is a lifestyle choice that we make. Um, and I think so much of the rebranding of life through social media and how things are presented through marketing that, you know, we've switched from the word vegan to plant-based, right? Um, and that I feel like that's more friendlier uh, than some of the other choices that are out there. And how, I mean, like your experience in 10 years, how has it gone? Like, what are you noticing? Like, are you finding that more people are open to plant-based than they are into the hardcore veganism? Yeah, well, I think that this city, and I think, I do think that it's changing a little bit, but this city of St. Louis is more vegan than plant-based, and I just, from an observer and also somebody who's like swimming in the pool, but um, I see more people going into a plant-based slash vegan diet um, by way of, uh, you know, to save the animals and um and the environment which is fine like there's no it doesn't matter i just that's less people are doing it for health reasons though it is changing and i think that that is kudos to these wonderful documentaries we have there are some i mean there's documentaries across the board for, that that um promote plant-based living veganism whatever words you want to say um but there's been so many health 
um, so many plant-based documentaries promoting it for health reasons, specifically Forks Over Knives with the Health and the Game Changers that has really just really taken um, taken hold of a lot of this population here in St. Louis. And so I do see more people doing it for health reasons. And I mean, I have new, just last week, um, I had nearly a full class in the Center for Plant-Based Living. It was a Saturday class and um, every single person was new. And I've never had that before. So um, that was, that was promising for me. I mean, you know, for people who promote it for health reasons. Now, what's the difference between plant-based and vegan? You kind of you kind of made that distinction a couple of times. What what's the difference? Yeah, so you know, Joe, it's a good question, and it and it keeps kind of changing. So, vegan. I mean, I think almost everyone knows vegan is just no animal products in the diet. We're not talking about the the lifestyle. We're just solely talking about the food. And so, a vegan diet is just no animal products. Now, it can also include. Oreos and chips and fried foods and things like that that don't have any animal products in it. Now those aren't going to be advantageous to your your well being, but they aren't going to have any animal products in it. Plant based kind of came about uh, several years ago to indicate going into a vegan diet um, for health reasons. So it's the lack of animal products, yes, but it's also the lack of overly processed, ultra-processed foods, fried foods, added um, vegetable oils, those kinds of things. So, but it, I can now, there's now there's another shift happening. And, you know, when I sit down and watch TV and a Tide commercial comes on and they say, we're plant-based, I just want to rip my eyeballs out. So <laughs> um, it's, everybody is really, really taking this whole word plant-based and running with it. So uh, that's something that I find myself um, uh, repeating again and again, and that's, that's fine. Um, that uh, plant-based is, well, it, 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 it should, it did originally, and I wish that it would still stay as an indicator of a healthy vegan diet. Yeah. And I think the more research that I've been reading about it is that the big stories are that plant-based is also synonymous with being environmentally sustainable, which I think mm -hmm. is why it's crossing over to so many companies yeah. as a great marketing tool for, hey, we're healthy. We're, we're good for the environment. <laughs> yeah, so, this is how we're going to set our side, ourselves aside from the, the competition. Yeah. Yeah. So let's, let's talk about that journey of making transitions to where your food is ultimately, it's not just going out to the quick you know, fast food place, because it's more of like, it became probably a lot of learning, a lot of time management, a lot of these choices to kind of like alter how you were spending your time, right? Did it at yeah. some point become the epicenter of your whole day or planning your day? And then how you're where you are now? Um, it, it did take hold. And, um, it, you know, it just happened so quietly in the back of my mind. Um, I, uh, after that first cooking class that, that Tim and I attended, so he found a cooking class at Whole Foods in Brentwood when they had that, that kitchen, that teaching kitchen. And I found myself just in awe of our instructor who was just slinging out plants, putting down uh, plates of food that were beautiful, um, six, seven ingredients each. We were all having a great time. It was a full class. And she asked me after class if I'd like to be her her, uh, her assistant. So for two, well, for two and a half years, I went to Whole Foods, two Whole Foods here in town, two nights a week. And I was her pack mule and I would, you know, bring all the, the ingredients and I would do all the dishes and, and pass out all of the, um, the recipes. And so this kind of slowly infiltrated my mind. And, uh, I, I didn't, I, I didn't, I don't know because really, Lydia, I didn't think that I was going to do this for the long haul. I mean, as you know, and uh, it just days became weeks, became months, became years. And then for whatever reason, I decided that I needed to grow a business around this. And I never even wanted to be an entrepreneur. I mean, I just wanted to be a corporate gal the rest of my life and just grow that way. Um, so not only did my kind of business mind take a take a leap, um, but also everything that I put in my mouth did too. And, and honestly, 
I really did fight it for a long time because I thought that, you know, I was going to be this, this, this corporate woman the rest of my life and, and be okay financially and all this stuff and, and, and have it made and uh, everything took a turn. And I, I, yes. So, and the first, let's see, we're in my, I'm in my 11th year now. Um, The first, I'm going to say the first seven years, (laughs) first seven, maybe eight years, I felt like I was swimming upstream. It was hard. And to do something I didn't even know I was doing, didn't even know where my life was headed. I just kept at it. And, um, and about three years ago, everything changed here in St. Louis. Um, The words plant-based took hold. There was, there was traction there and people were understanding the science behind it and didn't think that I was quite so weird anymore. (laughs) So, and then on, sorry, Joe, I was just going to ask, like knowing that now there is more plant-based and that you're saying that St. Louis is taking hold of it, but it's also, did that translate to going out to eat or like being able to go to the market and shop? um, Oh my gosh. Yes. So I, sorry. Yes. I do know you're going with this. Sorry. Uh, I, I, uh, (laughs) when we first, when we first would go out to eat, um, I would say to the server, oh, you know, can you recommend any vegan options? Do you have a vegan menu? And they would look at me like, girl, you need to get out of this town. Like it was just, there was nothing vegan here. And um, so that's really why I started cooking so much because I, I didn't know what to do. Um, and I, and I was scared to ask and, and it was just very intimidating. Um, but now, oh my gosh, I mean, I, I've been to, I mean, there is not one place I've ever been able to go here in St. Louis and not eat anything. So um, it's, you know, sometimes you need to put sides together or whatever, and that's fine. But really, especially in the last probably 12 to 18 months, I mean, I, you, I don't even know if you could not find something plant-based on a menu anymore. So let's, let's dive into that. So give us two things. Give us one that's a stalwart for you in the St. Louis region. Where's somewhere that for years, you, if you know that you're going to get something really good and you've been going there for a long time. And then give us one that like uh, just very recently has surprised you with plant-based options. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I just have to say this, my girl, Natasha Kwan, who owns Fritos, I've, she, she celebrated, so this, she's in her 10th year now, and I've been going there since the beginning, and I'll tell you, it's, I, I, I love that place, um, she's, and she, she's, she's a forward thinker, you know, because she just opened Diego's, so, which is not plant-based, um, but she has a vegan menu, plant-based menu. So um, that is one place I've always loved going. And we do have some really great vegan, vegetarian, plant-based um, restaurants here in town that I have been going to for years. You know, Seeds is great and, and Pure Vegan is great and Treehouse is great, you know, all those things. But I'll tell you what, also my Lee, I mean, come on, you know, who doesn't love my Lee? And I don't care what kind of diet you're on, you know? So um, those are some things that, and um, oh, what? Katie's actually, Katie's has a vegan pizza. Um, I don't know. Uh, there's so many places in town you can go, but if you want to know a surprise, um, not to say it's the best thing for you because I don't always eat the best things for me. Like, come on, the, really the best food that you're ever going to eat is going to come out of your own kitchen. Right. So when you go out to eat, you go out to be with friends and family and have that great glass of wine and, and just really just feed your soul also. Um, so as much as I sometimes want to get back in those kitchens, I think that I would not be welcomed. But I will tell you, um, we went to Crow's Nest in Maplewood um, for brunch, I don't know, two weeks ago, maybe, and I had their vegan burger. It was great. It was fantastic, you know, and, and I knew I, I haven't been there in years. And that it's just a cool place. I love that rock and roll place. But um, they have a great vegan burger, everybody. So please go there. Awesome. Awesome. I love that. I mean, I will tell you, um, Frida's surprised me when I went there because here I was going, I supported a friend who's plant-based and eating with her. And here I thought like, okay, we're not going to have any dessert. Their sugar is probably off limits. Like, <laughs> you know, those small assumptions that you make. <laughs> Did you get the tort? 
I did. I got the chocolate oh. tart. It was so rich nice. and Wait a minute. Wait jacketed. A minute. So I've, I've never been to Frida's. So talk to me about this chocolate tort because that to me <laughs> does not equate to this conversation. So sell it. Uh, what, do you, what is it? Um, I, mean, I think uh, I, sh- I want to say it's avocado. And of course, it like is. if she were. Okay. Is it is. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Avocado. And then she also does a um, chocolate peanut butter something something that's like crack yeah so um she you know she's been doing this a long time and she does her research you know she's she travels a lot um to see what's coming so she does stay on top of the trends so um yeah oh my god joe please oh my gosh i'll take you you have to go to frida's they have a big and big ass burger you would love oh my gosh please go well, I will, I will add it to my short list of places that I need to check out. There, there are Fantastic. quite a few, but that needs to go on my list. I hear it's, oh. again, it's a name that pops up all the time. Uh, whenever the conversation comes up, when people post it in the Chew and the Loop group on Facebook, it's always one that people throw out there as a recommendation. So the reputation precedes it, um, and uh, understandably so, I think. If you yeah. can figure yeah. out a chocolate peanut butter dessert at a plant-based restaurant, it, it, it's you sold me. I mean, heck, I love peanut butter cups, so what? Well, and I think, I think it like coming from the side of the eater, I mean, I think it's always hard for that transition because like you are trying to match texture. You're trying to match the same sensories that you would get because you're substituting, right? Like if you're taking butter out, like we all know what butter, it's delicious, right? That fat is flavor in cooking, but a lot of times those things are omitted or substituted with plant-based. So it's hard, but when you can accomplish that, Oh my goodness, you can accomplish that. You can, it, it surprises and wins people over. I mean, like Clementine's vegan ice cream that she has, like we have, oh. Oh yeah. <laughs> Say no more. No, I, have, I have had that. We did a, we did a taste test thing for a, quite yeah. a few of her vegan ice creams and they were stunning. I, I was, I was like, you're lying to me. That is not a vegan ice cream. And, and of course it is, but I couldn't believe it. Especially for a couple yes. of them. I was really, there's, I've got lemon poppy seed in my freezer downstairs. <laughs> she's a magician that Tamara yes. mm-hmm. yeah. um and I, and I will say also kind of going off that for a second Lydia um you know I don't I have been known to and I think a lot of people try to do it but I I think that we need to give this animal free plant-based vegan whatever kind of um time in the kitchen it's it's due and I what I mean by that is just because we're used to the butter and just because we're used to the way things should taste or do taste or have tasted I think we need to be um and this is something I think I would like this town to work on a little bit more we need to be a little bit more open-minded about new flavors and new Mm -hmm. textures so you know just because I'm making a cheese sauce cheesy sauce I like to say cheesy sauce um, doesn't mean like, I know it's not going to taste exactly like cheese whiz coming out of the microwave in that, in that hot jar. Like, I, I, I know it's not, um, I, I can use as many cashews and nutritional yeast and garlic and lemon as like, as I can, but it's not going to be dairy. You know, there's something else, something else about that, but I'm willing to take the time and the effort, um, to put into something, to, to make something delicious and that kind of maybe tastes like it a little bit but maybe I can make a really great mac and cheese that doesn't taste exactly like mac and cheese but guess what I'm not getting the cholesterol I'm not getting the saturated fat I'm not clogging my arteries I'm not you know like all these things so I'm still getting that decadent taste flavor and and reminiscence but I know and it is going to taste a little bit differently you know it doesn't need to taste weird it's just, well, I, I think, think we need to have a little bit more patience with this way of eating yeah. too. Yes. I think part of it's also like taking that check of how you feel after you get done eating. Um, I don't know how many times I've gone and gorged myself at a hamburger place and I've had the fries and the shake and the burger and I just leave and I feel heavy and I'm like, ugh. but recently I've switched yeah. over to getting over at, at high point, believe it or not. Like I was always surprised when I sat on their menu and I get their burger and I get it with avocado and some caramelized onions and I leave there mm-hmm. feeling just a little bit better about myself I mean I still have the fries and the shake but you know at the end of the day it's like I think taking those s- small moments to kind of recognize or to, to to change things up so that you are getting some better choices in your diet um with that 
but I mean, I think that's part of it too. How do you feel? How do you feel when you get done eating? Yeah. And you know, Karen, your, your, your comments kind of a, a minute ago really resonated with me about, you know, when you're making something kind of the expectations of what you're making, um, you know, your, your cheese dip, you know, that you make cheesy dip and not cheese dip really kind of resonates. Cause I think some people, they fall into that trap of they're going to make something with plant-based ingredients and expect it or want it or to turn out exactly like the original dish. Um, and if it doesn't, taste like what they remember or what they're used to or what they're expecting, then they immediately discount it as an option. And that's not always the case. I mean, you're, you can make, you can make a plant-based macaroni or a, plant, or a plant-based cheese sauce to your point. It's not going to taste like cheese, but it's going to taste good. And that's right. the, that's what you're shooting for is something that tastes good and is good for you as opposed to replicating something that you already like, you know, that, that's, I think the biggest, um, the biggest hurdle I've had to overcome in some of those things. Yeah. And, and yeah, thanks for saying that too. And, and, and also with, with that, the biggest part, and if you're doing this, if you've come to this plant-based diet from the angle of wanting to improve your health, I think the biggest missing key in many people's journey is support and having a family member or friends who support. And so somebody who says, Hey, yeah, you know what, let's make this together. Or, Hey, let me try that cheesy sauce you just made. I know it's not going to taste just like cheese, dairy, but you know what, it tastes good. And maybe we can do this to it. Maybe we can do that to it. So, so keeping people on the journey for their health reasons um, by having support around is, is imperative. It's it sometimes, you know, that's the whole reason I, I opened up the center for plant-based living is so people had a place to, to try new recipes and find rest resources and, and, and engage in support. So it's, um, it's, there, it's, it's just a whole lifestyle change and being open to the new, those new flavors is absolutely part of it. So let's talk real quick. Cause I know that if someone's on the journey, if they're ready to make the choice, um, you have worked with a lot of places, a lot of restaurants on helping to build delicious, tasty, nutritious plant-based item, menu items. Can you talk a little bit about that and like maybe help direct people where they can go to get these items? Yeah. I mean, ever since I started STL Veg Girl back in 2011, I have worked with restaurants throughout the years and it's it is so that people can all gather around the same table together. So I really worked with restaurants who are not known for being plant-based or offering plant-based options. So I really went on a limb and contacted chefs all over the place in, in the area. And um, one of my favorite ones that I've done talking, <laughs> getting back to high point or, you know, sugar yeah. fire, um, Mike, Mike Johnson and I collaborated several years ago and, you know, he, I didn't know this, but he was vegan for two years, which is why he always has a vegan option on his menus. Right. I know Mike Johnson. Um, so we collaborated and, um, he made some vegan ribs. I had something and that I think we had like three things on the menu this day and it was for charity. And we ended up, um, giving, couple thousand dollars, I think, to uh, food outreach. So that was a really, really, really cool thing. Um, because I mean, you never think about sugar fire and veg girl. Um, Modesto, if you remember Modesto, did something with them, mm -hmm. um, did something with Robust, they were great. Um, and uh, a couple of others. Now, one thing that I think is really cool, I got to say, I never, I never thought this would happen. Um, I have S I have the STL Veg Girl, I should say. They, Crazy Bulls and Wraps, has the STL Veg Girl logo up on their menu in all 16 locations. So they've asked me to come in and create a whole food, plant-based, oil-free salad dressing slash sauce um, because they didn't have one on the menu. So you, and that's called Smoky Mediterranean. Um, so if that's something you're looking for to put on any of their bowls or in their wraps or whatever, there is something now available. So I mean, it's, it's really, tasty. I've had that one. I've had oh, it. well, thanks. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. That means a lot. I, yeah, I, it's, I gotta say, and it's, I love working with restaurants, which most are here that are not typically plant forward and just having, you know, just so entire groups of people and entire families can go into any restaurant and everybody can have something to eat that they enjoy off of the menu. And so, and even like, you know, 
even, you know, it's, I think Frida's actually, I'm, I'm not quite sure. I don't know what she's, because there's going to be a Frida's 2.0. So she's doing some things with her menu, but I mean, even like Diego's, you know, I mean, it's, it's a lot of seafood and, and there's some meat there and there's a vegan menu, you know, so people, if you're a meat eater or not, you can sit around the same table and enjoy each other and not have to complain about anything, you know, oh, you're eating this or you're eating that. Who cares? You know, because if you think about it, if you go to Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving meal, and you're all eating different things, right? You know, and nobody's complaining about anything. So why, why does a restaurant have to be any different? Yeah. Well, and that's the point of gathering around food is to also share in that conversation and be able to, you know, it's, it's, it's the most, you know, historical way. So many deals are made over a meal or breaking yeah. bread together, right? Mm -hmm. You know, that's uh, right. So it's, I, I love the passion. I love the desire of it. Um, are you working on anything right now? Anything exciting that we should know about? Anything <laughs> fun? Uh -huh. Special releases here on the Chew and Lou? So we are announcing right now, because I just got the email, um, that we are going to do a plant-based restaurant week. So um, yeah, yeah, we're going to start it in Kirkwood, and we have plans to um, grow it just a little bit this first year. Um, we're we're going to go further out than Kirkwood as well, but um, because our place of business is in Kirkwood. Um, we're going to start there and I'm going to start uh, approaching some of the restaurant owners in Kirkwood and uh, we're still, oh. this is very new. Yeah. This is very new. That's a big very, deal. Like, like it just happened. Joe. It, I just <laughs> got the AOK -okay from the business district, like literally wow. two minutes ago saying like no breaking forward. news. Like, <laughs> this is, this is, <laughs> yes, that's right. That's right. This is breaking news. Yes. Yeah, so I do, I already have the Instagram handle. I already have the website. I already, like I did that months ago just to save it. Um, but we are going to do a St. Louis plant-based restaurant week. And we're thinking about, we're thinking probably May. That's exciting. Well, I am yeah. looking forward to it. That's awesome. Yeah. Look forward to sharing that. We'll share the Instagram once you publish it on the website on Chew and the Lou for all of our Thank followers you. to see it. That's awesome because I'm sure that we will be out there and we'll take some pictures of some of the food and talk about it and get people to come out and taste it and and and, and partake in some plant-based eating. Awesome. Thank you. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, great. well, Karen, you have given us so much to think about and on top of it, more places to visit as well. Um, thank you for your time today and for your wonderful mm. insight on this voyage to better health and food as a lifestyle. Yes, well, thank you, thank Karen. You. Thank you guys very much. I really appreciate what you do and I appreciate the platform you've given me today. And, uh, and just, it's just cool. And let me just say, I gotta say this. I know that we're being recorded and maybe I shouldn't say this now, but I'm going to, uh, Lydia, when I listen to you guys, I listen to your <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Do you know what ASMR is? <laughs> <laughs> I do. I listen, yeah, 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 yeah. I listen to Lydia and I'm like, I get all the feels. And I have to like listen to it again because I don't read, like, I'm like, wait, what did she say? I was just listening to the way she said it. <laughs> We have to remind Lydia multiple times before recording that she can't whisper into the microphone, that the sound levels don't work very well that way, that she has to speak up and project and not go into a sultry Kathleen Turner voice. It's hard. Oh my it's hard. I'll be getting ready for a class and I'll be listening to your podcast and I'm like, I get lost in the day and I'm like, wait, wait, hold on. What am I doing? What am I doing? Wake up, Karen. Wake up. <laughs> I'm so glad you know that about the microphone. Oh, that's too much, you guys. <laughs> oh, poor Veronica's always like, I have to adjust your levels so much. <laughs> Jeez. I love it. I love it. I'm so glad, oh, you, well, I'm so glad you. you said that. Thank you, Karen. It's been a yeah. pleasure. This, is, this has been insightful from a food perspective, insightful, insightful from a podcast recording perspective. <laughs> Um, you are welcome anytime. You are a friend of Chew and the Lou, and we appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi, guys. <laughs> All right. I think that's that's good for Karen's part. I think we've got that recorded. So, Karen, thank you so okay. much. This was a joy and wonderful. Thank you. Congratulations uh, the pleasure on the plant based. Congrats on the plant based uh, plant based eating week in Kirkwood. I know Lydia told yeah. me that that was in the works potentially. That's awesome. 
that that's an official go and and that's that's super exciting i know you're working on that so yeah Big yeah deal. we will we'll, we'll get it off the ground thanks you guys well okay lydia that was awesome I'm glad we talked to Karen. Again, we've seen her a couple times at 9PBS on a variety of things, but I want to ask you to do your word association again. With me. So pull okay. those words back up that we did at the start. You want to ask them to me again. I have new, I have uh, new responses you for you. You have new responses? Okay, are you, I think yes. you're going to ask I, I got to think of new responses, like... but I, now that I've been inspired by Karen Dugan, uh, SDL Veg Pro, I want to come right. up with better answers than hippies. <laughs> okay, are you ready? Okay. I'm ready. But you're ready. Resolution. Goals. Okay. Diet. Possible. All right. Plant-based. Can be delicious. Vegan. Plant-based. Okay. All right. I feel meat better. Al meat alternative. Meat alternative. What did we just say? Meat alternative. Um, what did we say at the beginning about uh, protein protein alternatives <laughs> um, for the, the, that South City uh, food plant that yes. they just built. Yeah. Uh, meat, al meat alternatives. Um, shift your goal or shift your expectations. All right. And then I think the last one was lifestyle. No, no, no. Lifestyle changes. I'm going to keep that one the same because mm -hmm. lifestyles can change. That one doesn't change. That one still is changing. Joe, you sound so enlightened. I feel so enlightened. You know, I think you walk in thinking like that a conversation about plant-based living is that we're going to be eating rabbit food or talking about rabbit food, but being reminded that, you know, it's not about just eating, you know, green things all the time, but it's about good, making good flavors and, and it's about resetting. I think that was really what stuck with me was the idea that resetting expectations, that you're not going to take a piece of, of tofu or a piece of, of plant-based protein and turn it into, you know, chocolate cake, even though it sounds like Frida's can do that with guacamole with, or with uh, avocado. You know, you, you've got to reset your expectations as as to what is delicious. I know that a steak is delicious. I'm not going to find a plant-based steak that tastes like a real steak, but I'm going to find plant-based things that still are really delicious to me. And that's okay. Um, and I also don't have to do plant-based 100%. You know, I can do plant-based occasionally, and that's still going to have a good impact on me. It's not an all or nothing kind of lifestyle choice. It's an It can be a series of individual choices, I think. Um, and those, I think, are all big takeaways. That's awesome. Well, I love it. I feel like well, here we are at the precipice of a new beginning or new enlightenment. So I'm going to go eat some salad now with a little bit of cilantro lime dressing on it. Don't oh, be I jealous, Joe. I love that cilantro lime dressing. Me too. I'm going to head to Revel <laughs> Adios, everybody. Yes. Stay delicious. Your hosts for the Chew in the Loop podcast are Joe Prosperi and Lydia Glenn. Our producer is Veronica Moheski, and this has been a production of 9PBS. Special thanks to our guest today, Karen Dugan, aka STL Veg Girl of the Center for Plant Based Learning. Um, you can download our podcast at chewintheloop.org or on your preferred podcast network.